How you doing? I'm Pete. Today we're going to talk about spines. Um, you know, we've got this business here called Malamotive and we specialise in bodywork tools. Spines is a tool we've been doing for a while now. It's a pretty specialised tool, it's got a lot of history. We've had a lot of interest in it lately, uh, a lot of questions, so we're going to put this little video together. Hopefully, we can uh, answer some of those questions and get some of the benefits sorted out, the advantages, save you guys some time, get a better quality work and uh, you know, make the job really enjoyable. So we got these spines, this is what they are. They're long tool that we make for specialised work. Um, the amount of flexibility these things offer is just ridiculous. They can be used anywhere from panel alignment, setup, gapping, filler work, dry blocking and wet sanding. And, and by far, these things, although simple in the way they appear, they are simply the most accurate tool you ever use for body work. So, effectively the word spline means to generate a smooth curve. So, we call the tools splines because that's what they do. They make a smooth curve. To generate a smooth curve is the ultimate goal of achieving body work. Um, heaps of different ways to do it, heaps of different techniques have been taught over the years, you know, wizards, blocks, different ways of doing filler, all sorts of things. These make that smooth curve straight up. So, you know, for, for custom car world, they, they're new, they, they haven't been around, but as far as the world goes, they're, they're nothing new. They've been around for a few hundred years now. Um, they come from shipbuilding before computers, so we had to make, make you know, nice accelerated holes, nice fluid curves, car design, clay modelling is probably where their strength comes from. You know, the designers use these things in studios to, to scrape out the clay and get those, all those, those beautiful sexy lines that we're aiming for. And then even now with 3D modelling, computer modelling, that's, you know, there's a little tool button on the side of the screen and that's spline and that means to make a smooth curve and this is what they'll do. Okay, so here we've got a few splines, various lengths, various thicknesses. The best way I can describe it is uh, you've got to choose the right size for the right surface. Bigger, flatter surface, bigger, thicker spline, smaller surface with more shape, smaller, thinner spline. So, we've got this car here, it's a little 57. Um, it's, we'll grab this one here, it's one of the full length splines. It's about an average sort of length and you can see here, how the tool itself, a little bit rigid, but it gives us a fair bit of shape. So what we're looking for is the edge of the tool gives us the goal, or gives us the shape, it, it's gonna tell us the story where we want the surface to be when it's finished. So you can see here, all I think we do, drop the spline over the car here, put a little bit of pressure towards it, and you can see the spline naturally takes to the curvature. You know, at some areas it lifts off the surface, some areas it touches, and ultimately, there are high and low spots. So different sections of the car will have different amount of curvature and it's up to the user to decide where you want your flats, where you want the curve to accelerate, roll off. But ultimately, that, that edge or that surface that we can see, that, that spline effectively is what we're aiming for. So if this was in metal, we could choose to do it in metal work. Um, if it's in filler, we could choose to wipe in more filler. This one's almost towards final paint, so what we can do is, you know, use this to identify what we want to do, low there, high there, this and that, put some sandpaper on it, make the adjustment and perfect that surface. Luckily here we've got these lights, which you can see in the background bouncing off the roof. Um, you know, in auto design industry, they're just called highlighting lights, different industries call them different things. In metal shaping, they call them light lines. Ultimately, the, the, the long band of light falling over the surface tells us the surface and the spine's still on the same thing. So here we've got this Nomad. It's, it's still in metal stage, so it's a really good opportunity to run over the surface and just check out, you know, pick up any sort of major issues. We've got, you know, perfect time to correct them before it gets sealed off and, you know, don't have to wipe the door over the whole thing. So probably, uh, you know, the roof on this thing's, I'd imagine, relatively standard, but easily with the spine, once we throw the spine over the top, run it across the surface, we can easily see where those pressings are, how much change there is, how much variation there is to get a continuous surface to run through. You can see right in the centre there, there's at least two or three, these two or three sections here are significant lower than the others. 
So, you know, we've got the time, we can get those bumped up, or we know if we're going to put those into filler, how much filler that's going to need to get the right shape. Down on the side, you know, nice ring, nice long rear quarter. Um, you know, it's pretty much the most important part of the car is the rear quarter. Everyone's going to get down there and they look down the side of the thing and go, this thing's straight, this thing's no good, this and that. So, again, just got sort of the medium length spline here. By putting this up onto the surface, running it through, we can start to pick up. Looking down from the top, down the side, we can start to pick up where we get a gap in the tool. Then moving it through the flank, we can identify what's happening. And go, yep, you know, right over the center of this rear arch, it's quite full. You could call it a high spot. Um, it can also be a character of a car of this era. Late 50s cars, early 60s, they had a lot of shape, a lot of fullness. So it, it, it's up to the guy doing the work to interpret it. He can say, I want this thing to be straight. It means that has to get pushed in. You know what? This is a rest style. I want this thing to be fairly authentic. So we're going to keep that. But what we do, we do know is where it'll need filler, where it'll need sucking in. Even as we go towards the rear supporter, we can start to find the specific point where it accelerates around, you know, which is here, from right down this section is where this rear quarter starts to roll in. We can quickly jump to the other side, see if it's the same, see if it's different, and then make the corrections in metal while we can. So we're just on the other side of the Nomad, you know, the rear quarter is looking pretty nice, um, you know, nothing too major we picked up. We've jumped around the other side just to have a look out of curiosity. We can see here, you know, there's a lot of hammer marks, some welding marks, grind marks over this area. There's a lot of shrink marks. So, quite obvious, this, this side of the car has had a lot more work than the other side. So, we'll just drop the spline over this side quickly. You can see here, right over the top, looking down, the rear coil should be a nice fluid line. You can see it's got a significant low area in there. Um, you know, look, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really want to go loading that up with filler. You can see it's about almost 10 mil in that worst area. So we've picked it up. So it's, you know, it's had a lot of work. It's got to get pulled out. So luckily we caught it. And the guys here have doing a lot of work to do before they prep this one for paint. It's so got this door here. We, you know, we can say the metal work's been done on this door. It's been sealed off. Time to skim up a little bit of filler. Ultimately, you know, be, we'd get a real nice job if we had the panel on the car, and run the surface through. But for the purpose of today, you know, we're here to demonstrate the spline. So we set this one up on the stand. We can get a good close-in look at what we're doing and follow along. So what we've got here, you know, metal work's been pretty nice. We've given this a quick block. It's, it's smoothed it all out, but it's picked up a few issues which we're going to address now. So if I drop the spline on down lower across the bottom of this door, over towards my right hand, you can see the front edge of the door is dropping away, which preference would be to tap that up in steel, but we can see how far it's going to come in. And then as we come up, we can see the daylight through the spline, and that's going to tell us exactly where the filler needs to be. As we move higher up on the door, that low area changes. As it comes to the top, it's a little bit deeper there, and it finishes off on the top edge. So, we know where the filler has to go. We can have a pretty good guess how much we need to make up. Then we're going to make up some filler and spline that on. So we've got a little bit of filler made up, just as normal. Let's we'll get that wiped in. Really like to just get a nice thin spread, you know, I mean, there's hundred different filler techniques. The one I like to go with is just get it, cover the whole area, not trying to get too much filled, just trying to get it wet so we can get good adhesion. And then we come and start to fill it up some more. So we spread our filler out, we've got the spline. We're just going to start from the bottom. Just on the side of the car, we'll be doing it the same way. Starting from the bottom, find a nice position where the spline fits the surface. And then just smoothly drag that through. 
all the excess fillers coming off and leaving it just exactly where we wanted it. Okay, so we just finished wiping in this little bit of filler here with the spline. Uh, you know, it's just a quick little one just for demonstration, but you can easily see where the spline's ridden on the high surface, and then it's just left the filler in those low areas. And that's, you know, it's just going to cut out our, our sanding time dramatically, and it's just left the filler exactly where it needs to be. So if we're doing this, you know, as a, doing this as a job, just work down the door and just finish out the whole door. All right, so we're back on to this uh, 57 coupe here. Uh, you know, we've been through the different process with our metal filler. Uh, now we're going to go, this one's getting close to paint. So how do we use the spine, a bit of rub down. Again, we're going to get, you know, the main length, this rear quarter, just to make sure it's all nice. So it's, it's halfway through some work, just had the guide coat thrown on. Got some sticky sandpaper on one of the spines here. And we'll just give it a rub and you see how it looks. So we've given just this rear quarter, I've spent about 2-3 minutes quickly rubbing it with the spline. You can see here where the spine's bridged across the gap, it's hit this area of this door, hit the rear quarter, and there's a definite low area in there. And that'll cause the reflection in the body side to roll into that shot line. So we can either live with it or we can correct it and make that run through for that show car look. It's rubbed out really nice down through the rear quarter over the rear arch, and you can see real obvious the, the, back, the rear portion of this quarter there's a large area there which we still have guide coat on, the spline hasn't touched it. So that's going to rub up as a low, you know, which ultimately is going to be a slight ripple through the rear quarter. So we can just keep rubbing that in, working that in and get it all smooth. And as we get down right towards the rear of this quarter, again, that last portion of the rear quarter, the curvature accelerates in, so that's fine. So you don't need to rub it to there, you need to step down to a thinner spline to finish off that back portion. Okay, so here we are, we're back on the 57 again, it's, we've got the roof here, it's been painted, uh, this one's going to get flow coated so it's in clear at the moment, uh, we just want to soften out some of that peel, um, you know, level it out, chop it down pretty nice, ready for some clear, so we're going to use a spline for a bit of a wet rub, just got some 800 folded over it, just do this one by hand, so just chuck a bit of water on and get started. So you just rub it like normal, the 45-45, but the spline will automatically just slice that peel out very accurately. We'll, just, uh, we'll get that dried off, give us a minute, and then we can check out how it looks. So we just finished off uh, you know, rubbing this small little section on the roof here, this 57. Uh, you can see this area here hasn't been touched. It looks, you know, it's pretty nice, not much peel, but it's still a little bit there. And as we transition to the area we have rubbed, you can see how easily the spline's picked up the, picked up the peel. There's only 800 grit ready for clear, and then down this section it's completely rubbed, all leveled out nice. Well, so there's a bit of a rundown on splines. Uh, hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight to what they're about, what they're capable of. Today, you know, we've just really just touched the surface. There's, there's a whole lot more to them. We do offer one day training where we get right into it, you know, right into how the application is, how they're used, a lot more detail, a lot more in depth on surface and control and everything else. So, you know, if you want to learn more, give us a call, check out the website, check them there. I hope you really enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Real special thanks today, uh, CAD Customs, you know, they gave up their workshop for the day, let's put this video together. And real special thanks to, you know, Harry and Off the Gun. They're doing great things for the industry, you know, really bringing a lot of these skill sets to surface and uh, you know, getting it out there, so check them out too.